Hey guys, it's Justin, and today I'm going to be bringing a video on how to export your QuickBooks Online data from obviously the service into a CSV file. And this works for all objects, for invoices, for customers, for invoices, expenses, etc. Right? Uh, now the problem is that within QuickBooks there's no good way of exporting your data. Now, um, you can obviously use this um, export data function here. Um, go export to Excel. This will give you some limited amount of data. For instance, the vendors here has um, the vendors for this specific uh, test company. And you can see that it has very limited information. Critically, for some of the stuff that I do for integrations and uh, data migrations, there's no IDs. Um, and if you're interested in that, link's down below. Um, so how do you go and get this information? Um, also critically with this, if, with these files as well, is that there is no, um, you're only limited to these objects, right? So there's, there's no invoices, expenses, payments, etc. Okay. So what I did is I built, here's an open source script to go and, um, export all this data and it's pretty easy to use. I'll show you how to use this here. And what you can do is export all the data with IDs into a spreadsheet. So what do you need to do? Well, uh, requirements, you need a QuickBooks account. Uh, this is a sandbox account. Don't worry about the details. Um, what else do you need? You need a, um, you need Python and you will need an app called Postman. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to go and configure this and get into that shortly. Okay, so the first thing that you'll need to do is you'll need to create an app uh, within the uh, Intuit API. Again, if you want to know how to do that, you need to go to QBO API and it's the first link here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go to dashboard. Um, I have a couple apps here. You can go ahead and create an app, uh, select this, this is the only option, give it a fun name like um, Hello World. And um, what you'll do is you'll select a scope. The only scope you'll need is uh, this one right here, combaintuit.quickbooks.accounting. Brilliant. Create app. Um, from here, uh, what you can do is you can see the keys and credentials here for only for the development store. So this is what I'll end up using. 99% um, of people are not going to be using this. They're going to be using the production settings because they have a uh, real company that they're exporting data from. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to go fill out these forms. There's an assessment. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Probably takes about 30 minutes. Uh, and from there, you can go and get the keys and credentials that you'll need, uh, which will just look like this. Okay, we need these uh, for later, uh, but the other thing we'll need to do is uh, go and follow the Postman instructions. So I have them here inside my web browser. If you go to the uh, GitHub uh, repository, which will be probably the pinned comment, you will see uh, that link here. Um, what you can do is, um, and what you'll need to do specifically is you'll need to add this callback URL in here, uh, wherever I put this and we'll save it. Okay. Next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to download this. Uh, I use Git to go and download, uh, things from GitHub. So we can go and grab the clone URL. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and clone this in a, in a folder that I want this to be cloned in. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the command git clone and the URL. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up VS Code so that then I can open this and show you on screen. Okay, uh, the next thing you'll want to do is you'll want to rename this. Uh, you can also copy this as 
essentially the same thing. Um, but I'll rename this to config.py. And this is going to store all of the variables for um, that are specific to your script. So refresh token, access token, uh, client ID, client secret, company ID, and the QuickBooks object. So what we'll do from here is we'll just start filling this information in. So um, for instance, we have uh, to get the client ID, which is right here. So go ahead and copy paste this here. We need a client secret. We'll go ahead and paste that there. Um, and the one thing, uh, we'll need the company ID in a little bit, but I'll just go ahead and do the Postman setup here. Um, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Postman. Okay, so I'm gonna use Postman to go and uh, get this information. And what I'll do is start filling things out. Now I have some of this already filled out, but uh, this document right here is, is very thorough on how to go and fill everything out. Um, pretty much you'll do everything like in here, um, except obviously you'll have your own client ID and client secret. So go ahead and get these two things into here, get a new access token. And this prompts me to go sign in. So I will go and do that now. And what we'll do from here is we'll grab this refresh token here. So from here, uh, we need to paste this into the refresh token. And the last thing we'll need to do is get the company ID. Now, the easiest way to do this is from API tools and docs, you go to API Explorer, um, there's something that you can go to press all entities, although it doesn't really matter, and just go and look at a quick request URL. So you can see this in pink right here is the company ID. So we'll go ahead and paste that there. This right here is the URL. Now, again, I'm in using a sandbox environment. Um, this should not apply to you, uh, and you would know if this applies to you, but I'll change the base URL. So with that, we are ready to go and export the data. So one final thing to go and um, one final thing to go and get this ready is we need to run pip and install and this will go and install all of the requirements that are necessary to run this. Give it a second to run. And from here, we'll just do pip m shell and then python main.py. So what I have here is I have exported all of the items, which is the consider the products and services. Um, and you can see, whoops you can see quite a bit of information here. If I go bring this back over. So uh, a lot more information for this. Um, not much to say for items, but this is a way to get it. Specifically, you have IDs. Um, if we wanna go and change this, um, I'm just gonna go back to uh, the Git repository, and you can see if I change this to, for instance, vendor, um, and run this again, go ahead and open containing folder, and we can see the vendor. So you can see 
quite a lot more information as well. So you can see display name, print on check, some billing address, which maybe isn't as nice. Um, company, bill rate, so quite a lot more information. Uh, one last example is invoices. So if I do invoice and run, we will see all of the invoices. Again, if I go here, uh, and this was not a, um, the invoice was not something that you could just easily go and export. So we can see a lot of various system fields. Um, you can see your custom fields. You can see your transaction number, transaction date. If I go and open this up, um, you can see the link transaction, which would be some sort of estimate payment, etc. cetera. Um, you can see uh, tax codes, customers, uh, address, etc. So with that, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And um, if you're interested into seeing what I can do to help you with your Salesforce and uh, greater system needs, leave a um, uh, message using the link below. Thanks and have a good day.